but you know, let's just take take somebody who's just trying to maintain a really good, healthy microbiome. And, and I know you you're famous for, I think most famous for your book Wheat Belly. Um, but what's your just general guidance or advice for someone who we want to maintain a good, healthy microbiome? And um, whether we're adding, you know, l ruteri or gas rye or bacillus or whatever it might be, how do we avoid that as we walk through life? What are your top tips to avoid like detriment to your to your microbiome? You know, beyond the obvious, you mentioned chlorine and fluoride in the water. You mentioned, you know, antibiotic use. Are there other things that that you would guide people to say, hey, preserve your microbiome by doing these things? You know, we have to kind of go back to real foods that don't have preservatives, emulsifying agents, uh, other additives, because those are all disruptive on the gastrointestinal microbiome. So people don't have to remember that you should avoid polysorbate 80, for instance, in ice cream. But go back to foods that don't have labels. Go back to foods that don't have risk of additives. An avocado, uh, pork. <laughs> um, foods that are as close to their basic form as possible. Once you allow a manufacturer to add stuff, it could be carboxymethylcellulose, could be BHT. Uh, rather than memorize that list, we go back to just whole real foods, organic, of course, whenever possible, minus herbicides and pesticides. The other thing is, is lots and lots of fermented foods. The, the, the interesting thing about fermented foods, so let's say you have some kimchi, or sauerkraut, or maybe you fermented some uh, cherry tomatoes and garlic and eggplant on your kitchen counter, so easy. Uh, you can either use, by the way, uh, microbes resident on the surface of that vegetable, uh, but it's much easier to use a starter culture. Here, here's an easy workaround. Buy or obtain some, uh, yo uh, some sauerkraut or other fermented food. Take some of the brine. It's like fermented pickles from the store. Make sure it's fermented, of course. Take some of the brine, add that to your chopped veggies immersed in saline. It has to be salt water, uh, filtered water, no chlorine, and non-iodized salt also. So uh, pour that brine from that commercial product into your mixture of fermented veggies and let them ferment on your kitchen counter for days to weeks. And so it's very inexpensive.